Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the official ARC podcast, number 133. My name's Coach Brad, and I'm here with the core team. Your host tonight, as always, our wonderful leader, Atlas. The floor is yours, sir. Thanks for the introduction, Brad and folks. Welcome back to another edition of the ARC Nightly Podcast. This is Monday. This is a special Monday in crypto, in traditional finance. We're seeing folks running around like chickens with their heads cut off, worried about their bank runs, understanding that uh, sometimes they're too big to fail. And I wonder what that means. These these bailout packages that uh, are always so convenient. CEO bonuses all around. To the lady in the back, yeah, you get a bonus too. You know, right before the they come in and shut us down. Let's do a nice little cash out for, for, for the great people of the bank. Haynes tobacco is unfolding everywhere you look. We knew it was coming. We know it's going to continue. And the hyperinflation, it hasn't even reared or showed its face. But we're feeling it. And that's why we're here at ARC, smiling face to face. Uh, sorry, ear to ear. <laughs> All faces smiling. And uh, understanding that we are hedged against the inflation, understanding that we're moving in the right direction and offering folks all around the globe an opportunity to get this crypto, to be on the right side, folks, of the printers. Understanding that the fractional banking system is corrupt. These interest rates we haven't seen anything yet. And with that, we stay here, continue focus, strong, growing, working on our utilities, working our, on our expansion. I had the uh, pleasure to, to see the new updates that we looked at last week of the legacy NFT and how they're being put into the mobile application. And folks, I, I don't think I've seen a be- more beautiful application, mobile app, ever and that's not hype it's just my personal opinion and uh, I think very highly of it and I suspect that a lot of people will as well it is quite special and with that we're in a bit of a hurry we have a, uh, a special guest this evening that got out of bed just to be here with us on the all aboard but first let's get a quick update from uh, Mr. Brett Norton how are you doing tonight, sir? Hey, good. Can you hear me okay? Perfect, sir. Okay. My uh, Wi-Fi connection hasn't been that great lately, so I'll just make it short and sweet. Yeah, we uh, we got some updates from uh, Scripto King on the PWH day. Everything is looking great. Uh, we've just been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, uh, trying to get that wrapped up and get all the collateral and everything we need to to really make that uh, an amazing application. As you mentioned, it's... Uh, it's come together really well. So we're excited about it and uh, just been, you know, working with the team behind the scenes. We're putting together uh, what our long-term roadmap is going to look like. We're hoping to get that out and reveal a lot of the big kind of secrets that we've been holding close to the chest here lately. So, uh, but along the lines of, you know, these things that are happening in the marketplace, you know, we need to adapt and really be a step ahead of everyone and and also ahead of the market so that's what we're looking to get out in front of everybody and and uh, have that hopefully well received and and build a lot of excitement for the project Mm -hmm. Uh, in the midst of all these uh, updates and things that we're going to be pushing out pwa the landing page and everything we're trying to pull this all together so that everybody gets a really good picture of what the overall vision and, and direction we'd like to head is Fantastic. Thank you for that update, Brad. And I'm looking forward to it as much as you are letting the amazing community know what we've been cooking, what this team is up to, uh, what's already live and functioning uh, that they don't even know, but it's going to be coming their way. And it's great to spread the good news and uh, to get folks excited so they understand the future what's to come and, and that they're going to be all a part of it. 
and they're going to be able to have more passive income. They're going to be able to see this project as this community and a team even grow all together on the same arc, which we always say we need a bigger boat. <laughs> well, we surely do. And, and uh, an interesting fact that's, that's here staring us right in the face is that uh, Mr. Catalyst, is he here? I think, I think I saw him. Yeah, he's here. Catalyst, to, to, tonight with the, uh, the 85th Spark Prize winner, that's over $2,000 a year. You're a resident analyst, mathematician. That would put us over $100,000 street value worth of ARC deposited into. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Sheesh. Catalyst, does the grandmothers, uh, our wide app, have that? Have they, have they given away <laughs> almost a hundred thousand dollars street value? Oh no. <laughs> do they have, do they have the nitro mode? <laughs> no. Go ahead. Not my grandmothers. <laughs> uh, last week the legacy NFTs crossed over a hundred thousand dollars. And now, uh, yes, sir. Wins all around folks so these these uh, metrics are are our milestones that we're so proud of and uh, last night just last night we had a 400 arc all-time high I mean we knew it, 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 it's coming we know there's so much more to come but as, as it happens it's sometimes you got to pinch yourself and say wow is this is this real is this reality I mean look how so many folks are going into that nitro mode and it's making a massive massive difference it's a gift that keeps on giving um you know you 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 can't buy love and you can't buy spark it's a random thing but man when it comes sheesh it's a beautiful thing coach brad are you ready for the all aboard sessions you've got your guest lined up ready to hit main stage center stage spotlights on yes sir it's all yours thank you very much atlas um so as usual guys just want to go over the the sweet widget uh, how long have we got i believe we have 15 minutes left i'll drop the sweet widget into the uh, main chat for everyone if you haven't already please go over and interact with that. Let me just check to make sure that it's got 15 minutes. It should have. Yeah, perfect. Oh, it's got some good engagement on that today. That's great to see. So I'll drop that in the main chat for everyone. Yes, sir. And uh, if you haven't already, please go over, interact with that. We are a community driven project and it helps yourself. You get entered the daily draw of between 50 and 100 BUSD worth of ARC that gets airdropped directly to your vault account. The only thing that you need to be eligible for that is to have an active vault with a minimum deposit in it and uh, to complete all of the tasks on that uh, in, in, on any given day. Uh, the tasks are super simple. You just log into the sweet widget with your email address, um, go through the task list, one might be, for example, to subscribe to a YouTube channel. You click the task, it will take you directly to the piece of content. Drop the subscribe or the like or the comment. Come back, enter your name, move on to the next task. It takes two to three minutes and it is uh, great for every single person on board the arc. So uh, if you haven't already, please work that into your daily routine somewhere and uh, you know participate. We need, to, we need the whole community participating in that. So um, tonight we have uh, Driptopian on. He's a very well-respected YouTuber and investor from the Drip community. And he's been investing in DeFi for, for quite a long time now, knows what he's doing. Flying the flag of ARK, uh, great to have him with us. He's come up with a new business idea and is integrating that with his ARK investment. And I'll just let the video explain that. And then he's going to come on after the video. He is waiting. Um, I have spoken to him, so he'll come on. And Oh, he's in the chat now. Brilliant. Okay, so he's going to sneak out and um, 
and talk to us when the video is finished. So I'll go ahead and play that now. And uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll discuss it with uh, with Dryptopian. Might help if I share my screen. There we go. Okay. Channel, thanks for being here. Before we get started, let's do the uh, the usual stuff. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Hit the notification bell. It tells you when I go live or upload upload a new video. And I'm not your financial advisor. Do your own research. Be diligent in the space. I always use a ledger. I would pretty much recommend everyone else does too. Okay, so ArcFi, this is my video of the day. This is episode six, I believe. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you can see, I've got some airdrops ready to do. This is an updating, um, but I think there's 11 on there now. So let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, my timer ran out. I've been out all day uh, meeting with someone, talking crypto, and a few beers and something to eat. So first thing, let's get this compound withdrawal and airdrop schedule done. So we need to do this. If I can put you on display capture, you'll see the wallet. So I'm going to try this at three. That's lowered the gas significantly. If, you, if you're wondering what wallet that is, it's called the Rabi wallet. Now, it's a busy time of day, so that might take a little bit of time to go through. Um, so basically, I've changed. You don't need a custom RPC. Um, it's all built into the wallet. So while I'm talking and doing my thing, this might stay pending for a while, or it might go through. It just depends. Currently, my principal balance is at 426, NDV 227, which is looking healthy. Compound to withdrawal ratio is also looking good. And pending deposits is 1.77. So someone on the team or multiple people on the team are DCA, which is cool. So as we let that go through, I want to talk to you about something that's happening. Um, so basically, I have partnered with... I don't know if I can name everyone, actually, so we probably won't just for now, but there's a couple of uh, three YouTubers of varying sizes and also a developer. And what we're doing is we are creating a brand called Foodtopian. Now, for those that don't know, basically, I love food. It's always talked about in my group. Everyone calls it Foodtopia, so we've just run with the name. And what I'll do is I'll put some pictures on screen. Bear in mind, this is brand new. Now, we've gone for a cartoony theme for the brand. It's saying it's not been done in 50 blocks, but it still could go through. It's a cartoony theme that we're doing. So basically, long story short, it's going to be a crypto project that people can buy an NFT to start. The NFT is not going to be part of the project. We're using NFTs to raise the capital. So we're going to raise capital through the purchase of NFTs ranging from 0 0.1 BNB up to, let's say, 5 BNB. And basically, whatever money you put in, we will return your investment up to 250% um, payable on a weekly interest rate, which is it's not a degen rate. It's not a good rate in terms of what people see as high yield. It's anything between 40 and, sorry, 35 and 40. 50% a year. But the reason we're doing it is because we're bridging the gap between crypto and in real life. So you can become like a, if you like, a part owner for a time of an in real life takeaway restaurant business. So we're not competing with crypto projects. I want to make that clear. This is not for us to make money in crypto uh, and compete with the likes of, you know, Arc and Drip and EMP. That's not what we're in it for. We're using crypto and DeFi as a, a crowdfund, if you like. And we just pay people back up to a certain point to say thank you for believing in the business. Now, we're taking that money plus our own money, and we are searching, researching, and finding uh, local food outlets that uh, most of these takeaways in Britain, chip shops, fish and chip shops, and kebab houses and pizza shops, pizzerias, etc. a lot of the older generation are now retiring, and their children are not willing to take on the business. So what happens is they get sold or just close. Now, we, the profit margins in some of these businesses are crazy. Now, we've got a white paper being built. I'm going to talk about all of that when it's released. But part of it, which is why I'm talking about it on this video, is obviously to work these businesses, we need staff. 
Now we've got potential um, staff ready to be recruited. We've started the search. Uh, we've found three restaurants already that are cheap enough for us to buy and with a high enough yield in their profits. So what we're going to be doing from these takeaways is I'm going to be live streaming. If you've ever watched TikTok and you'll see people cooking from a point of view, yeah, a first-person point of view, FPV if you like, people are really into that kind of stuff. So we want to live stream from the takeaway each Friday with a camera that's pointing down towards me, serving customers, working the till. I am going to be working in these restaurants hundreds of hours a month, and you're going to see the money going into the till. And some of that money is going to be used to pay out the investors. Now, the important thing to talk about, each staff member is going to be given a vault account where they can pay or we will pay their tips and overtime into that account for them to then continue to grow that position and ROI from that position and then grow the position. And the hope is that they will then tell their friends there's going to be QR codes, apologize for the phone, there's going to be QR codes which link. Um, there's going to be three, three things that they can choose from and one of them is ARC. And basically what they're going to do is, you know, select the protocol, we'll get it set up for them. There's going to be QR codes on the menu that we send with every single meal. And bear in mind, some of these restaurants are sending out a 1,000 meals a week on Just Eat, Uber Eats, Deliveroo, and other partners that help takeaways and restaurants deliver food to people at home. Also, our own website with a crypto guide on how to do things and links to connect them with the correct people. So it really is a place that we're going to bridge the gap between in real life business, people who are in real, in real life businesses and cryptocurrencies and our favorite ones. And um, we've done some research and we, you know, we've already signed one person up to an account and they are desperate to start earning the money. And, you know, there's a lot of tips and service charges that we're putting onto it um, where we can pay that directly into vault accounts. We've also got some contract calls that we're going to work on for loyalty, where if you are a holder of, let's say, a vault account and you come into the restaurant because you've found our menu, you've signed up, you, you're under our team wallet, the business team wallet, you get 10% off your food for life or for the life of your account. So imagine that. The, the connection between business and all of this extra reach. Now, I would put money on it that 99.9% .9 of every customer that gets a delivery is not in crypto. Now, with inflation, we're calling it the inflation beta card. So it's crypto inflation beta card, the CIBC loyalty card. Now, basically, that is just helping bring the cost of their food. You know, on a trip, not everyone buys every day, but every weekend, 10% off, you know, a £40 meal is £4 off. That's a free plate of chips or whatever it is. You know, we're going to work the loyalty scores out and stuff. But it's going to be super good because they get rewards from us for being a holder and we get rewards from them from being a holder. So it continually works with each other. And so, yeah, that's basically what we're going to be doing. And, and I, I think running the numbers... There's one restaurant that we're hoping to secure within the first month of, of the capital raise. And we're, we're looking at the figures that they used to do um, as a pizzeria. We've got a marketing budget to bring that back. The area is affluent. The area is growing. And there's so many markets to tap into from sport to hospitality, marketplaces, and residential and commercial opportunities there. So it's super bullish. We're super excited. And I think... The reach is up to 2,000 non-crypto people per month. And even if we just get a slight percentage of these people converted into users of, of you know, ARC and, and such like, and then they tell five friends, then they tell five friends, that's kind of what we're planning. And we believe, looking at the numbers, that it is 100% a viable, viable plan. And moving forward with it, we're not stopping. We're, we're in development stages at the moment. So I probably actually can't share any photos yet. But if you join my Telegram and the Foodtopian one, there'll be more information leaked in there uh, as we go through. I've had a meeting today, been to the pub, had some food and a couple of beers. 
spoke with the developer on Made Sugar who's doing fantastic work. We've got some fantastic ideas on how to onboard. And I believe genuinely there's about to be some serious mass adoption. And I've told Coach Brad, look, the way I work is this. I don't just want to be the bottom of the pack. I want to have the biggest syndicate, the biggest name in DeFi. And this is just part of how I'm going to do it. And coming up with ideas and plans and stuff, you know, there is other things involved which I can't go into, but let me put it this way. Actions speak louder than words, louder than words. We all know that. This is an ongoing thing. It's happening. And let's just see the results after a month. And I cannot wait to get started. So I'll link everything you need to know in the description below. Absolutely. And as you can see, I had to speed that up. Uh, it wasn't going through because it's busy. Head to the syndicate. Please remember to leave a comment and such. There we go. 11 now. Happy days. So I've got 3.39 uh, to airdrop. So let's do a quick airdrop for the team whilst we're on camera. Because it's very important to give back and make sure that the people support you, you then support them. Okay, so there's the new team member. We'll do that one. We'll do Scott. I know that's Scott because it's a big team. And then we'll do randomly. Let's just do this one. No, that's, no, we'll do that one. That one I'd won yesterday. Okay, so there's three. So each person gets 1.13 arc. Amazing. We'll keep the gas as is. Put that at 5.2, proceed. It's that easy. So I'll continue to update you with, with the project and the way we're going to onboard, but that is the basic concept. And if I'm not making it to the podcast tonight, it, it will be because I'm asleep. I've got to get up at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning to pick our new horse up all aboard the Ark with another animal in the household. <laughs> We've got five dogs, one rescue cat, and now a horse. So another horse. So I'll share some pictures of that when we pick her up tomorrow. But yeah, we've got a long drive to get her. So if I'm not on the podcast, I want to say thank you to the team. I appreciate you all. Respect. Any questions, please hop onto the video and I'll speak to you there. All right, guys and girls, take it easy. Bye-bye. Okay, Lee, are you there, sir? You want to come on and uh, explain how you tie this in to, uh, to the ARC platform? Yes, I am here. I apologize for the Batman voice. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. How is everyone doing? You okay? Very good, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very good, thank you, sir. <clears throat> yeah, awesome. For the people that don't know who you are. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much for the platform. My name is Lee. Uh, you'll see me as Driptopian and Cryptopian on, on YouTube. The reason I've got uh, a presence in, in the space is I've been doing YouTube for over a year now. In fact, now 15 months. Um, I've got a, a combined uh, following of a, uh, just under 10,000 if you add in Twitter and, and the YouTube channels and a pretty decent sized Telegram with 1,700 members. Um, I found DeFi, I'm going to cut it short because I'm a waffler. Uh, I found DeFi because I got sick of the fiat system and the way the fiat system is run. I have owned two businesses which hit seven figures. They were sold. I made some decent money in the real world. And I've now started to, to learn how to try and bridge the gap between crypto, in particular the niche of DeFi, in, integrated into in real life businesses, which is why um, you'll you'll see that video that I've, I've made earlier is one phase of how that's going to happen. And to 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 add to the video, I see it as a humongous opportunity of onboarding, um, and because we all know it's difficult to build a team if you haven't got an audience. And I understand that, but the way that we're going to set up what we're doing is basically the project is, is more of a, a new form of crowdfunding. Uh, it's not necessarily a crypto project as is because that, you know, we don't want to conflict with, with that kind of, that, that kind of thing. So it's more to do with getting the capital raise, saying thank you to the investors, making sure they're whole and have received the money back, 
but the onboarding side is the main driving force with, you know, with the NFTs on the menus, uh, sorry, the QR codes on the menus, integrating when we know more about it, the mobile app for Mark. And a lot of the people that I've worked with in the past and the people that we're recruiting for the, the restaurant business, these people are stuck in the fiat system. They are completely stuck in it. They don't know how to get into crypto. They're scared away by mainstream news and, and, and narratives that they see on, you know, on the BBC and, and such like. And we want to try and help them to understand that there is a way of uh, bridging the gap. And that way is by continuing to do your job in the fiat world, earning your money to make sure your rent and your mortgage is paid and your family's got a roof over their head and you can eat. But showing them, whilst they're at work, that the customers who are joining our teams, because we, we've trialled this with a, with a couple of family members, and their main concern is it's too difficult to set up a DeFi wallet. They don't say it like this, but this is what they mean. They don't know how to set up a MetaMask. They don't know what a seed phrase is. So as soon as uh, you know we've got these mobile apps and the onboarding system, the white glove service, which is like a phenomenal thing, with the the added reach of customer base that we're gonna we're gonna achieve within the first months of of opening the first restaurant uh, takeaway in, in the UK, obviously for anyone that's listening overseas, you know we've all got the the outlets and the takeaways. Think of your subways and your, your pizzerias. That's kind of the thing we're going for with the the delivery partners, such as you know Uber Eats and such like, and the reach of new customers that we can can hit as a target audience. Yes, the conversions are going to be slow at first, but we genuinely feel that um, with our in-real-life business experience that we can definitely bridge the gap and using the, the services that you fantastic people are providing with the white glove service and the mobile app that's coming, we genuinely believe that that is going to be the last stumbling block removed from onboarding. So we can bring the customers forward and then we need the little bit of help converting them into actual vault holders, holders and part of our business syndicate, which is what we're going to be um, operating from day one, if that helps. This is really a part of your plan to reach mass adoption through the ARC platform and, and grow your syndicate, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. So the, the company itself will hold uh, a team wallet and everyone that's onboarded through, you know, the, the QR code that's on every menu, that's in store, you know, what, it's, it's not like we're sitting there making a pizza and then saying, oh, by the way, join this. It's more a case of when people start realizing that, you know, um, John, who, who does the pizzas, is earning an extra, it could be £50 a week. Um, you know, because we're going to pay our staff members, drivers, people who are associated with business, they're going to all be set up with a, with a vault account. So when they get a tip or, a, you know, a, a, a thank you, they can elect to have that put into the, into the vault account. And then we know that they're going to tell their friends. We know that people who receive a meal, you know, all, the, all that you get at the moment in the box is you just get a menu with what you can buy next time. Well, we genuinely think that once we start to educate people, because that's obviously the most important thing in, in all of our spaces in crypto, education starts with the first time that people know about something. So we, we've done a little bit of market research with, with a couple of companies that I'm involved with, and the response has been, you know, four out of five people said they would try it. That's the main thing. To get that conversion is just getting someone to accept that it's not just magic internet money, and it is actually something that's working. And I mean, with the recent um, situation with the banks, you know, I know that's terrible for the people who've got money, as long as they're made whole like the Fed says they're going to. I think people are going to start realising that the banks ain't all that, and crypto is, is the way to, to move forward. Excellent. Love, love the plan. Love the plan. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I know you got out of bed to come on and talk to the community. <laughs> so thank you for coming on. And uh, I look forward right. to seeing where it takes you. Yeah, and what we'll, what we'll do, obviously, we, we're more than happy to to share any alpha and stuff. So I'm always in contact with you, Brad. And um, 
I'll be sure to let you know. If we've got a, 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 um, a light version of, of some of the restaurants. So I'll send you all that and, you know, the community can get involved if they want to. But the main thing is the onboarding, we believe, is going to be ultra bullish. So let's see how we can work that into the into the dApps and stuff and, and get people mass adopted because that's what we're all here for. And I wanted to say thank you to everyone for listening to my weird Batman voice. I appreciate you all. Thank you. No problem, Lee. Thanks for coming on. And, uh, yeah, look, look, as I said, look forward to, to seeing where it takes us, mate. Thank you. Um, we do have a schedule to stick to. So um, moving swiftly on, keeping in line with the new time frame of the uh, podcast. Um, Mistletoad, are you ready to do the daily drawing, sir? Yes, we are. Give me a second. Awesome, thank you. Can see it fine? We certainly can. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, on the count of three, Atlas, on you. Unless he doesn't have the sound ready. Three, two, one. Lissonaro. Congratulations. Thank you, Mistletoad. Um, congratulations, Lissonaro. You have won 50 BUSD work worth of ARC. Um, Atlas, are you doing the Spark rewards now, or are we going straight into the breathing with Coach and doing the Spark afterwards? Uh, let's do the breathing first, and then we'll do Spark. Okay, awesome. Uh, Coach Roberto, if you are ready, sir, it's all yours. I'm ready. Okay, so today we're going to cover breath holding. So we're going to experiment with it. So does everybody remember when you when you would do breath holding uh, pranks when you were a little kid? How long you could hold your breath? <laughs> so when you hold your breath, it has several physical, psychological, and emotional benefits. Uh, if you can hold it for a real long time, you know, it could be good if you're swimming or maybe you're going to certain public toilets. You know, you have to be able to hold your breath. But physiologically, breathing patterns supposed to be you inhale, you exhale, and you hold, and you pause. That's a natural way of breathing. But most of us, we inhale, we hold, we exhale, we hold. Spiritually, that means that when you hold your breath after the inhale, you are afraid of death. And when you hold after uh, the exhale, you are afraid of life. So, and just... Just notice that, that that's kind of like a spiritual thing. Um, but that's not the, the correct way that the body should breathe is inhale, exhale, pause. And, and, and to be able to do it consciously. So what we're going to practice today is that we're going to hold the breath after the hold before the inhale. And a normal person, if you if you have the right level of CO2, you should be able to hold that pause minimum 30 seconds to 45 seconds. 
Now, you know, I mentioned CO2 because by holding the, the breath up to the exhale, you're creating, you're creating uh, more CO2 into your body. And, and, and that has a profound physiological, emotional, and psychological benefit because the carbon dioxide is a volatile acid, so it affects the pH balance of your body. It also acts as a vasodilator, affecting the smooth, the smooth muscles that form the walls of blood vessels. So what it does is it opens and it dilates and expands the oxygen delivery and transfer of neutrons and met metabolic uh, wasters to and from the organs, tissues, and cells. So the more CO2 you can hold, the better it is for your body to function, to be able to exchange, you know, oxygen, and, you know, in your blood system. So it's a good thing. So what we need to do is practice it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by doing a few uh, cider reliefs and everybody sh everybody that's doing it should be sitting down never do breath hold standing up <laughs> because if you lose it you're going to fall pretty hard so so everybody sit down relax and we're going to take a few breaths just to just to relax our body. So we're going to inhale through the nose like two or three seconds. So inhale, hold it, and then let it go. Let's do that about five times. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Do it a few more times. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. And then pause. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale again, take it in deep, exhale, try not to hold in, in the inhale, after the inhale, so inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So notice how you're feeling. So now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna inhale, then we're gonna exhale and we're gonna pause. And I'm gonna keep time and uh, I'm gonna be saying, okay, five seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. And if you have to exhale, just exhale. If you have to, don't force it. Just keep relaxing. And just notice how you're feeling. And let's see how long you can hold it. So are we ready to do that? Let me hold on. Get a timer here. So here we go. So we're going to inhale. Exhale. Pause. Just notice how you're feeling, relax your body, relax your mind, five seconds. Notice how you're feeling, 10. Keep relaxing, 15, 20. If you have to stop, just, just notice, you just stop and just start breathing again, 25, 30 seconds. 35, 40, if, you, if you're still holding, you're doing good, 45, don't force it, if you all of a sudden feel like you need air, just breathe, take it in and relax, 55, okay, we got a minute. Let's go for a minute 15. If you're still holding. And I'll take it to 130. I don't think everybody's anybody's going to go to 130. It may be Atlas. <laughs> okay, that's 25. 
30. Okay, I stopped it. How's everybody feeling? Very relaxed. We say, did everybody hold? Now we're going to relax a little bit and then we're going to try it again. We're going to do it a couple more times, but you should be able. And then if you do this every day and you practice, it's to try to go, try to do it like one or two seconds better every every day. And and that means that you've been, been able to accept more carbon dioxide into your body. So it's really very beneficial for you. But do it very consciously and relax and, and, and relax and don't overdo it. So let's try it again. Are we ready? So we're going to take a couple of inhale and exhale. So inhale. Let it go through the mouth. Pause. Inhale. Bring it in deep. Let go. Relax. Now. We're going to inhale, exhale, and then hold. Like five seconds. Notice how your body's feeling. Just keep listening to your body, just relaxing. Twenty five, thirty five, got forty five seconds. Keep relaxing. Now we're up to 60. Notice how you're feeling. Notice your body maybe wanting to breathe. Relax your muscles. So we got 130. Let's go to 145. If you're still holding, that'd be pretty good. <laughs> okay. How was that? Just observe your body, your mind. So breath holding is a part of, a very important part of the breath. But you have to do it consciously. When you do it unconsciously, it's not good. Who was able to hold it more than 30 seconds or less than 30 seconds? 35 seconds was kind of the breaking point for me, and I was kind of getting a little lightheaded. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so you, you did over 30 seconds, which is good. And then with practice, you'll be able to bring in more carbon dioxide, which is good. And, and you'll, you'll be able to hold a little bit more and hold a little bit more. And then once you learn how to do this hold, then you can do a hold after the inhale. And sometimes some people can do it better after the exhale. Some people can do it better after the inhale. Um, there's a there's a guy from uh, Holland, I think he's from. That uh, he, he's uh, his company. It's Breathology. He has the world record of holding his breath underwater for 22 minutes. Incredible. I can't believe that. It's like impossible to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can you can you can look it up in in YouTube, right? And uh, and he also has a world record of one breath dive. 
you know, swimming straight, uh, 200 meters. That's insane. What is your record, coach? What, how how long can you do it for? You no, know, I I I've gone to like 130. You know. Wow. I, but yeah, but that's when impressive. I when I first started, I couldn't hold it more than 20 seconds. Yeah, that's why I feel <laughs> or I'm at right now. <laughs> <laughs> because I I I I didn't breathe correctly. I I most of my life for 50, 60 years, I was breathing a lot of mouth breathing, and I wasn't aware of of my my breathing techniques and even though I ran and I practiced a lot of yoga and all that I, I wasn't aware of my of my breathing cycles and and how you know on all these things that I that I'm teaching you guys but the more you can Talking become it. aware conscious it's becoming more aware being able to relax and then consciously you know move the breath certain ways to support you so you can release all that all that resistance in the body and in the mind. So, You're talking so, about so Wim Hof for the coach. Yeah, well, Wim Hof is good, you know. You, you know, he, yeah, he's, he's, ex, he's extreme to one side, you know, like, you know, for all you northerners, you know, the cold and uh, you go into the ice bucket, you know, it's, it's very good for your uh, for your system, for your nervous system, and and it's good, you know. That's one type of, you know. I, I'm a warm-blooded guy, but <laughs> but, but I don't I don't win half, you know. It's good. It's like it's like trying all kinds of different breath, and then eventually you practice. You know what you should do is practice this. Like every Monday, whatever I do, you should practice five, 10 or 15 minutes a day for the whole week. So you can get used to it and notice how you're feeling, how, in, uh, how supporting you to, in this case, to be able to hold it every day, you should be able to hold a little bit longer. And, and the more relaxed you can be, the more you're going to be able to hold. So that's it for today. Anybody else have any questions, a different experience? D don't feel bad if you didn't hold it for long. You know, most people won't, hold, you know, they, they already get air hunger at 10 seconds or 15 seconds. If you do 30 seconds to 45 seconds, you're doing really good. You know, that's a, that's a kind of like a comfortable thing that you should be able to do as a normal if you practice. That was awesome, Coach. Thank you very much. Great, okay. If, an, great if anybody ever has any questions or something going on, just DM me or I'm available. Okay, that's it. Alex, how, how did you do? Uh, I did. I did good. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm pretty used to it, so it wasn't hard. It was fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Coach, you were saying that if you if you don't consciously do that, it's a it's a bad thing. What do you mean by that? Like, that it's bad. Like, well, bad in regards like when. When you inhale, the normal way the body sh should function is when you inhale, you should exhale. But most of us are holding after we inhale. And we, we don't even know it. Yeah, I I'm bad for holding my breath. That's why I ask. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you're not getting the full, like, the full, uh, and, and there's a, uh, and there's a uh, like mind kind of thing, spiritual kind of thing, where when you're holding, that could be done because of some trauma you had when you were younger, or maybe when you were born. So it, it's like you are afraid when you hold it after the inhale. It, it, it's there's like a uh, not you most you know most people you're afraid of of what they call death because you're holding you're holding to that life energy. 
inhaling is life energy, exhaling, you're letting that go. And then supposedly when you pause, it's that you're okay with nothing. So the pause after the exhale is good, but you have to be conscious. A lot of people just hold even the breath after that more than it should. And they're doing it unconsciously because they're afraid to bring that life energy into their system. And, and, it, and, it, and it affects your physiology and affects your parasympathetic system. It affects your, you know, your, your blood, your blood flow, all kinds of stuff. You know, it's not That's you know, good to know. Thank you. So, so then just practice, right? All this is practice. So you can start noticing 90% of the people in the world are not breathing correctly. And then they're wondering why they get sick and all, and all that kind of stuff. So if they can improve the way they breathe consciously, they can be able to shift how they feel, you know, how they perform. Uh, so, you know, we say you shift the breath, you shift your breath, you shift your life. But it's a conscious effort. It's, remember the three things I said at one time, awareness, being aware that how you're breathing or not breathing correctly, relaxation, so you don't tighten up and so you can release and let go. And then conscious breathing, it's being able to take charge of the breath because right now the breath is breathing us. We're not breathing the breath. When we consciously, like in, when we get it every Monday, we consciously start breathing a certain way. We're, we're now breathing because we're consciously shifting the breath patterns. And now we got control of it. The breath is the only function of the body that you can, that is natural, but that you can control. That's beautiful. I love and the that. More you, and, and, and so the more you can do that, the better you can shift whatever's showing up in your body or in your mind. And then you can also let the breath take you in a journey that you've probably never been to. But th that's for another topic. <laughs> you know, right now we're l working more on the physical and the mind. So thank you for asking and for sharing. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. That's it, Coach Brad, are you there? Or are you still holding the breath? <laughs> oh, no, I, uh, that was, a, I'm a smoker coach. That was a, a tough one for me. Uh, I got, Got a bit lightheaded after about thirty seconds. Um, uh -huh. Just, just, a, just one for me that I would I need to practice for sure. But uh, I'm just preparing your your weekly posts to drop into the uh, main channel. So for anyone that wants to learn more or read, um, basically what Coach just taught us, it will be in the main chat and pinned in the in the in the pinned messages. But no, yeah, thank you very much, Coach. That was great stuff. Um, okay. Yeah, just a, a practice one for me, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, if you practice right. enough of that, you, you'll start smoking less. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be a bad thing, Coach. <laughs> okay. You know, you know that smoking is, is really... The, the reason people smoke, I think, because I don't smoke, it, it, it is to relax. So, so you really, what you're doing is taking, you know, cider reliefs. You inhale and then you let it go. So the idea is, is to start breathing more and eventually to replace the cigarette with the breath. It's certainly a form of... Uh de-stressing you're, you're not wrong there mm -hmm. okay. and, and just try a little bit you know just practice go practice all right guys <laughs> have fun
Thank you very much, Coach. You're welcome. Atlas, I think it is time to unleash the beast. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm ready to go here. While Atlas is getting the uh, cold storage ready for the Spark reward, Z, what have you got planned for us tonight in the DeFi sessions? Yeah, man. Um, basically, uh, uh, unfortunately, a big hack just took place on Euro Euler Finance. Um, the uh, hacker was able to drain um, a big lump sum. So we're going to cover that. Uh, we're going to cover... Um, uh, I've, I've been getting a, a lot of DMs about USDC and and fears of it being defaulted. So I've got a, a Twitter post I want to cover that, and 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 then we can look at the charts as well because um, uh, Bitcoin did take a little dip today. Uh, we, people thought it's going up to twenty two k, so we'll be covering Hello. a bunch of things. Awesome, sir. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, we sir. can hear you. Hello. All right, here we go. Folks, tonight's uh, winners, their wallet ends in B, wait, sorry, 4BB3. 
and they're the winners of 382.10 ARC. Congratulations. Could you hear the soundboard, Coach Brad, or the music? No, no, we couldn't. That's why I tried to get a conversation going with Z. I didn't think we had a soundboard tonight. Oh, we do. <laughs> oh, you know, we I do. apologize. I would usually let you know. I saw you were on mute, so I thought you were. <laughs> I'm a, I apologize. I would have. Uh, I would have let you know. No, there was no, a bit of silence. That, that, that is not a first time winner. Ooh, that is a oh. second time or third time. Uh, second that I found so far, they won number seventy nine on December twenty fifth. 113.69. Sheesh. <laughs> Spent some time. It has definitely been some time since we have a repeat winner. Congratulations. Boy, are they in the Nitro Boost mode. Amazing. Amazing. So, um, uh, sorry, Z, let's uh, let you continue. Let's go right to the DeFi sessions. But before, uh, how are we doing on time, Coach Brad? Uh, we are right on. We are just just hit an hour, an hour and one minute. But that that's pretty good All for right. a Monday night with the uh, the added uh, session from from coach with the breathing. So I, I think we're making good time. All right, fantastic. Well, let's get right into it, Mr. Z, and we'll keep it quick because uh, we have a lot of work here happening on the back end uh, today. So uh, we're going to have to be running out pretty shortly. Go ahead, Mr. Z. Thank you. Um, can you guys hear me just fine? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, again, uh, Coach Roberto, um, muchas gracias. That was a great breathing session. And this time I did not fall asleep. I'm, I'm sane and uh, leveled out. So thank you for that. Um, uh, let's share my screen. Let's share the screen. Let's look into a few different things. Uh, I haven't got much to, to cover, um, as you know, but uh, there's a few things uh, I've, uh, I'll have i cover for today, some really cool stuff. So the first thing um, I want to talk about is a hack that just took place on Euler Finance. So let's cover that to start with. So Euler Finance... Um, uh, basically, uh, was hacked for two on uh, about 195 million dollars today. Uh, uh, sorry, like March the 13th. Yeah, so so yesterday, so Euler Finance hacked for over 195 million in a flash loan attack. Uh, Euler Finance was exploited in a flash loan attack that drained hundreds of millions of decentralized stablecoins and synthetic ERC20 tokens. So so these, if you guys can see my screen. Uh, this is uh, the amount that the hacker was about uh, was able to drain. He was able to drain uh, Dai, wrapped B BTC, Stealth ETH, USDC, Stealth ETH, and he was able to do it uh, through a simple exploit on the smart contract. So let me see if I can read you guys this. So Ethereum based on custodial lending protocol Euler Finance uh, faced a flash loan attack on March the thirteenth. Uh, with the uh, attacker managing to steal millions and die, uh, USD, stake deed. And yeah, according to on-chain data, exploited, uh, carried out multiple transactions, stealing nearly 196 million. Uh, the ongoing attack has already been, uh, has become the largest hack of 2023. And um, yeah, according to um, data, uh, the attack correlated with the deflation Attack one month ago, the attacker used a multi-chain bridge to transfer the funds from BNB uh, chain to Ethereum and launched the attack today. Uh, so Zach XBTC, another prominent on-chain sleuth, uh, reiterated the same and said that the movement of funds and the nature of the attack seemed quite similar to Black Hats that exploited the BSC chain protocol last month. Uh, so these are the wallets. Um, uh, that the hacker has, and that's where all the funds are based currently. So uh, so this was a tweet by Yudler Labs. They had to say this. So they said, 
We are aware and our team is currently working with the security professionals and law enforcement. We will release further information as soon as we have it. So unfor uh, unfortunate event. So so, so for, for the technical people that like know a bit of solidity, a bit of code, a bit of programming, uh, this is what uh, caused the attack here. So there appears to be a bug in one of the Eular smart contracts where it doesn't check for the health factor when executing the, the donate to reserver function. Because of that, the attacker was able to liquidate himself from the protocol, repay the flash loan and make a huge profit. Um, we saw a, a similar thing happen to um, uh, Curve Finance, I believe. A very, very similar thing that happened to Curve Finance. And they were able to mitigate it really quickly. Luckily, it was a white hacker uh, that, in fact, gave the funds back. Uh, but in this event here, uh, it's 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 quite bad. Um, uh, so 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 these are the kind of exploits that uh, that shouldn't be happening on DeFi, but they do. And uh, and yeah, so it was for 195 million. Uh, that's the first thing I want to touch. Um, the next thing I want to sort of touch is um, like a lot of people have been uh, sort of asking uh, me about USDC and the chances of it defaulting. Uh, so I found a, a nice uh, sort of Twitter uh, profile by the name of Gracie Chan. Uh, she she posted a really good thread that basically uh, uh, sort of covers uh, the reasons why we shouldn't see a USDC default. So so I'm gonna go through a few of these uh, threads here. So, so the first one is, according to Deloitte, January, 2023 audit report, Circle's total reserve values as of January 31st, 2023 was 42.3 billion uh, with 33.7 billion in short-term U.S. Treasury bonds. Uh, from the reserve perspective, the Circle, a Circle held in SVP only accounts for 7.8% of its total reserve amount, uh, amount, which is relatively small. Although there is no way to determine whether the remaining 12% of cash assets held outside SPVF are entirely secured, the high percentage of high treasury uh, U.S. Treasury bonds, nearly 80% make up for a prudent investment portfolio with low risk. So the 33 billion in short-term U.S. Treasury bonds, which Circle holds, which Circle holds, would have almost zero chance of defaulting. In the worst case scenario, where SVP goes bankrupt, Circle would theoretically lose 3.3 billion. However, if FDIC, the U.S. government, or large companies bail out SP, SVP, Circle's actual loss would be minimal. So, yeah, it's a pending $3.3 billion uh, uh, hole right now that, uh, that, that they find. But, but you guys have to sort of keep in mind that the, the full reserve amount is $43.3 billion with $33.7 billion in uh, U.S. Treasury bonds. Um, so Circle is uh, safe to go, and I believe um, it's actually made a recovery in price action as well. So for, for the people that really know how to arbitrage this thing, I hope you guys did well. Uh, but yeah, we're almost to a dollar pegging now. Um, so we're at 99, 0.997 now. So, so yeah, nothing to worry about. USDC will be back. And, uh, and yeah, I think that sort of covers my uh, DeFi sessions for today. Great stuff. Thank you very much. I know I spoke to a few people today worried about uh, USDC and moving it over to Bitcoin and USDT. So good to see it's basically back to peg. Absolutely, absolutely. It is people. People get scared. Um, I mean, I received my payments in USDC, so I had to hold it for like four days because it did peg down for me to ninety three cents. Uh, but it's back. It's back, and it should be back to a dollar by the next few days. Awesome, great stuff. All right. So, how many minutes are we in already, Coach Brad? One hour and ten minutes, sir. All right. We're just ten minutes late. That's not bad at all. 
All right, let's bring it to a close, do a quick uh, Q&A after the recording as we have to, a lot of work here uh, to take care of tonight. So uh, first of all, we want to thank everyone who came out here tonight and also the folks that are listening uh, to the recording at a later date. As you know, we're trying to condense the three, four-hour podcast into a much shorter uh, version. We believe that an hour should be sufficient to uh, really bring the all aboard as well as our uh, updates uh, to the overall uh, community. And uh, we also know that all of this information is uh, being summarized by the Crypto Badgers over the weekend into their weekly video. Uh, they showed us a fantastic one that they just did for last week, as well as the Medium publication uh, officially here from ARC, where we do a weekend review. Keep everyone up to date there as well, as we understand that everyone has the time or opportunity to be here with us uh, in the podcast or even listen. So we're keeping everyone uh, informed, which is extremely important for us. With that, we want to congratulate tonight's uh, winner of the Spark Rewards. Uh, also, uh, a pat on the back for the whole community. The the project overall, we've paid out over $100,000 in ARC, deposited directly to the winner's accounts. Uh, so, you know, great, great uh, milestone there. And uh, also for Legacy NFT holders, over 100000 BUSD liquid has been paid out to those holders. And... Uh, the return on investment in such a short time is already over 26%. Folks, that is extremely, extremely bullish. Thank you, Coach Roberta, for the breath this evening. We'll see you next Monday again for another great session. This was the breath huddle uh, Monday. Uh, another great technique, getting that uh, CO2 into the bloodstream. And uh, we will be back tomorrow, folks, uh, same time. Uh, we understand there's a little bit of a difference now with the daylight savings, but uh, we know for sure it'll, it'll be, we'll stick to the 11 uh, p.m. UTC. I, I believe that might be 7 p.m. EST, but we'd have to go and uh, verify. I don't, I don't have the two clocks here in front of me, but That's we'll keep right. you uh, updated with that. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mistletoe. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to update that on our banners as well as everything else. Um, at, until we all catch up back into our regular time zones. So folks, have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow.